What's up, peers, and welcome to the World Crypto Network. You're back for a reading of the Bitcoin Optech Group newsletter. Thank you very much to all the principals and associates of this great venture. And thank you, of course, also for the founding sponsors. Today, newsletter number 47 on May 21st, 2019. This week's newsletter describes the BIP Any Brief Out software proposal summarizes a few technical talks from the Magical Crypto Friends Conference and includes our regular section on BEC32 sending support and notable changes to popular Bitcoin infrastructure projects. Action items, none this week's. Enjoy your week. <laughs> News. Proposed any brief out SIGHASH mode. Two weeks ago, Anthony Towns posted a proposed BIP to the Bitcoin DEF and Lightning DEF mailing list for consideration. The idea, BIP previous, any previous output, provides two new signature hashing, SIG hash modes, that allow a signature to commit to fewer details about the funds being spent than that the default BIP tabroot and tab script SIG hash mode. This enables the functionality previously described by BIP118 with modifications so that it works with Tabroot and reduces the risk of accidental misuse. One of the new SIGHASH modes is directly compatible with the proposed L2 layer for the Lightning Network, requiring only modification for Tabroot and the addition of the Caproon signature described later. A second SIGHASH mode commits to a more data than necessary for L2 in a way that it may make it useful for atypical commitments in L2 or for use in other protocols. A significant advantage of this proposal over BIP118, no input, is that it can make use of a taproot cooperative spends, allowing the two or more parties to a Lightning Network channel or other contract protocol to optionally spend their funds without revealing any of the contract terms, including that any brief out was in use. For a quick look at any brief output, we consider it in the context of two-party L2-based Lightning Network channel. A reminder that the key feature of L2 is that each balance changes in a channel, the state update, can be spent by any later state update. So there's no risk of publishing an old state to the blockchain like there is with the current penalty-based Lightning Network channels. L2 calls this capability rebinding, and BIP118 proposes to make rebinding available by allowing signatures to skip committing to the input part of the spending transaction, allowing anyone to modify that part of the transaction to, be, to bind any later state they knew about. The SIGHASH any brief out any any brief out any script mode, any previous output, any script defined by BIP any brief out works similar to BIP 118, no input, with the following changes. To use any brief out any brief script, the public key of the signature is compared, will need to use a special prefix 0x00 or 0x01 not to be confused with the pub keys used for BIP tabroot's output key that uses the same prefix in a different context. Additionally, the script being evaluated will need to contain at least one signature that does not use any prev out any script or any other new SIGHASH mode described later. This non any prev out signature is called the Caperone signature because under reasonable assumptions, it prevents any previous out signature from being misused. See newsletter number 34 for details about the replay problem. With the correct prefix and the chaperone signature, any brief out, any script allows the signature to skip committing to the identifier for outputs being spent, the out point. That previous outputs script pub key and the hash of the executed taproot leaf, the tap leaf. The transaction digest to which the signature commits still includes some details about the previous out, such, that, uh, such as its Bitcoin value. Additionally, 
bip any previous out point uh, also defines another sick hash mode sick hash any brief out that also requires the same specific public key prefix and chaperone signature but it includes the previous out script pub key and tab leave hash in the signature whereas any previous out script can allow eld2 like rebinding where any later state can bind to any earlier state but earlier states cannot bind to later states there may be alternative protocols and times within the L2 protocol where the participants want to ensure that the state N can only bind to the state N minus one and not to any other state. The proposal has begun to receive feedback on the mailing list, so we'll provide updates in the subsequent newsletter summarizing any significant discussion. Talks of the technical interest at the Magical Crypto Friends Conference. Brian Bishop provided transcripts of about a dozen talks and panels from the MS MCF conference two weeks ago, and the conference organizers have uploaded most videos. Although only one of the talks described are any specific new developments, several of them did discuss details and implications of technologies such as confidential transactions, taproot, schnorr, and other ideas related in Bitcoin. We found the following talks particularly interesting. A talk by Andrew Polstra about the cryptography used in cryptocurrencies. In particular, he focused on the difficulty of building systems where everything needs to be done correctly in order to resist attacks. A panel by Rudolfo Novak, Elaine O. Adam Bank and Richard Myers about using Bitcoin without direct access to the internet. Discussion topics included satellite-based block propagation, mesh networking, amateur radio, physical carrying data, sneaker nets, and how they can make Bitcoin more robust to current users and more accessible for users in area with limited network access. We found particular interesting a side discussion about the security of relaying bitcoin data in short the bitcoin protocol is already designed to trustlessly accept data from a random peer so non-net relay does not necessarily change that trust model and a panel by will o'burn lisa Nagood, alex bosworth with moderation by lia kuhn discussing the future of lightning network mostly the short and medium term conclusions of current development efforts surrounding the Lightning Network 1.1 specification. There are no hyped claims in the discussion, but a simple description of how Lightning Network can be expected to improve in ways that make it easier for users and businesses to adopt. Back 32 sending support. Week 10 of 24 in a series about allowing people you pay to access all of SegWit's multiple benefits. Up until this point in our series, encouraging wallets and services to support sending to back 32 native SegWit addresses, we've focused almost exclusively on the technical information. Today, this section expresses an opinion. The longer you delay implementing back 32 sending support, the worse some of your users and potential users will think of your software and service. Quote, they can only pay to legacy addresses. Oh, let's look for another service that supports current technology. Services that only support legacy addresses are likely to become a cue to the user that minimum development efforts is being put into maintaining their Bitcoin integration. We expect that it'll send the same signal to users as a website in 2019 that covered a shockwave Adobe Flash elements and that claims it's being viewed in the Internet Explorer 7, or see an even more imaginative comparison written by Gregory Maxwell. Back32 sending is not some experimental new technology that still needs testing. Native SegWit unspent outputs currently hold over 200,000 bitcoins. Back32 sending is also something that's easy to implement. See newsletter 38 and 40. 
Most importantly, as more and more wallet services upgrade to BAC32 receiving by default, it's going to become obvious which other services have fallen behind by not providing sending support. If you have not implemented BAC32 sending support yet, we suggest you try to get implemented by 24 August 2019, the two-year anniversary of SegWit activation. Not long after this, Bitcoin Core's next release is expected to begin defaulting to BAC32 receiving addresses in its GUI and perhaps also its API methods. See newsletter 40 and 42. We expect other wallets to do the same, except for the ones that have already made BAC32 their default or even their own support address format. Notable code and documentation changes this week in Bitcoin Core, LND, C Lightning, Eclair, Lipsec P256K1, and the Bitcoin improvement proposals. This Bitcoin Core change extends the Create Wallet RPC with a new passphrase parameter that allows creating a new wallet that encrypts by default. The existing wallet can still be converted to the encrypted with the Encrypt Wallet RPC. This Bitcoin Core changes how the import wallet, import pub key, import address, and import private key RPCs interact with pruning. Previously, they failed if pruning was enabled. However, pruning can be configured to manual operation, prune equals one, so that to no so to set a larger than the current size of the blockchain. For example, uh, prune equals 450,000 providing cases where pruning is enabled, but all blocks may still be present. With this merge, the calls only fail if blocks are actually missing because of pruning. Alternatively, users can call the import multi RPC that will allow it importing any keys or other data, even if blocks have been pruned, as long as there's data creation time. Timestamp is within the range of blocks that have not yet been pruned. This Bitcoin Core changes speeds up the get block stats RPC mode more than a hundred times as measured by Optech by using chain state undo data. The data that's used to roll back the ledger to a previous state during a blockchain reorganization. This also removes RPC's dependency on the transaction index. This Bitcoin Core change and or these two Bitcoin Core changes add functions required for the encrypted version 2 transfer protocol described in newsletter number 39. This is only a small subset of the overall changes required. See the primary pull request here for more details. This C Lightning change extends the Pi Lightning utility within three new methods. AutoClean configures automatic deletion of expired invoices. By default, one day after they expire. Check determines whether a command is valid without running it. Set channel fee allows setting the fee for routed payments, either a base fee added to any routed payment or a percentage fee that is applied proportionally into the previous, or sorry, to the payment amount. And this final C Lightning change extends the Pi Lightning with the delete invoice method that deletes all invoices that expire before the specified time. Peers, you gotta subscribe to the Bitcoin Optech newsletter. And again, thank you very much to all the founding sponsors, principals, and associates of this great open source organization. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye bye.